of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. I am by nature sinful and unclean. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. I confess unto you all the sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you. According to your steadfast love, remember me. I have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. For the sake of your goodness, O Lord, I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. I flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. Have mercy on me, and for his sake, grant me remission of all my sins. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Who is the man who fears the Lord? Him will, be, him will he instruct in the way that he should choose, for it believes and is baptized will be saved. Grant this, Lord, to us all. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Almighty and Eternal God, we implore you to direct, sanctify, sanctify and govern our hearts, and live in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that through your mighty protection, both now and always, we be preserved in body and in soul through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's Gospel reading is from the Gospel of Luke, the fourth chapter. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for forty days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days, and when they were ended, he was hungry. 
The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command the stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man should not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, and said to him, To you I will give all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem, and set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Here we come to the temptation of our Lord in the desert. We see just this last chapter, Jesus Christ was baptized, and it was made abundantly clear that, yes, he is the Son of God, period. So Satan now knows who his enemy is. It's Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And now he's coming out to the desert to Satan's domain, and now Satan's excited because now he can use all his dirty tricks on his enemy, Jesus. And Satan's favorite tactic is to subtly manipulate things. Satan, he knows how God thinks, so he's good at changing it just a little bit to make it a little bit nicer, a little more tempting, so people will go Satan's way rather than God's, and with a little bit of course, he could really derail someone. So he says, okay, Jesus, you're the son of God here on a rescue mission for this creation. But you know, Jesus, it would be so much easier for this rescue mission, you prior prioritized your own divine glory. Yeah, think about it, Jesus. A Roman flogging and crucifixion? Uh, give me a break. Jesus, you're the Son of God. Why, are, as a, why incarnate as a human are you some Jewish carpenter who's a nobody? I mean, come on. You could be the God Emperor of the planet Earth. Or oh, that kind of power, Jesus, of course you could affect a change. But of course, if Jesus Christ were to reign as a worldly king, there would be no cruci crucifixion, no death to forgive us our sins. And likewise, he's not dying, he's not rising again from the dead to bring us all salvation. And Satan, uh, Jesus' mission then would have failed. So Satan is rebuked by Jesus in the desert with Scripture. So we know that both Jesus and Satan use the Scripture here. Now, Jesus Christ is very careful, deliberately picking every word in context with reverence and sensitivity, while Satan, rather, deliberately cherry-picks. He takes things out of context to twist them to uh, make his point. Jesus says, um, do not put God to the test. Why does Jesus say that? Because Satan says, you know what? God says he'll protect you. So take me as your hand, Jesus. You, you want your hungry? Tell those stones to become bread. Jesus Christ is like, look, humans don't live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. Likewise, Jesus, uh, jump off the temple, um, you know, the temple mount. It's hundreds of feet in the air. I've killed anyone. It was a very tall structure. Because look, Satan says, the Bible says the angels will protect you so you won't even stub your toe. And Jesus is like, Satan, God's with us. God protects us. Thanks be to him. That is not a license to test God. And so Satan, you know, he tries all these dirty tricks. Jesus, tell these stones to become bread. Take matter, matters into your own hands. No. Jesus, become the God Emperor of the Earth and forget your rescue mission. No. Jesus, God will protect you and jump, jump off the top of the temple. No, no, and no. Satan, I know the Bible as well as you do. In fact, I know it a little bit better because I wrote it. I know the context. Stop cherry-picking. And Satan's like, fine. You won't give a temptation? I'll wait till it's an opportune time. Bye. I'm sure Satan was furious. Because every other point in history when dealing with the people of God, Satan was able to successfully manipulate what God gave, manipulate the scriptures and so on to drag people down. But Jesus Christ ain't fallen for it. Satan sulks away defeated. In fact, next to the crucifixion death of our Lord, I've yet to see a more humiliating defeat for Satan. He sulks away beaten. And as our Lord's dying on the cross, Satan's Probably dancing for joy, going, I did it! I did it! He's dead! I won! Ha 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 ha! And then suddenly there's a tap on his shoulder. Who could th You! Who would tap Satan on the shoulder, figuratively speaking? That would be our Lord and Savior, 
Jesus Christ, but letting him know that by dying, <coughs> the sins of mankind are atoned for, or forgiven. Also, Satan, I'm going to rise again from the dead, and in my resurrection, all those who have faith will rise again with me. Your plan to bring death to the entire cosmos has failed. You lost Satan. I, God, become man, Jesus Christ, have won. Thank God for his victory that first Easter, and thank God, Jesus Christ, for his victory here. For he lets us know it's during our lives here on earth, just like his life during his time on earth for 33 years, it's not a foregone conclusion that Satan will win every single time. Now, don't get me wrong. We're to struggle with sin all of our days. Doesn't mean that our struggle is necessarily in vain. Jesus Christ beat Satan here, and that means by his help, by his Holy Spirit, we can beat Satan sometimes as well. Our Lord never, ever fell into temptation. We will from time to time, but we'd still put up a fight. And here, Jesus Christ shows us how. First and foremost, realize that you are not alone. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is here with us. Our fellow saints in the struggle in life are also here with us. And the saints who preceded us in death are cheering us on from heaven. We are all in this thing together. And the very temptation Satan throws at us, he's thrown at other saints before us. We are not alone. And through prayer, through asking for divine guidance, the divine assistance will be there to guide you through the difficult times or temptations of life. Also, don't neglect your baptism. Don't neglect regular um, taking communion, receiving confession and absolution. For these are the means by which we know, yes, we're forgiven. Yes, we are a child of God. And combined with the, the scriptures, which are our sword, when we prayerfully ask God to guide us, the reverence use of the scripture of these sacraments can guide us so we do not fall to temptation every single time. That's right. The battles of life are not a foregone conclusion. Now, while I grant you we'll still struggle with sin, we'd be confident that when we do fail and then when we do sin, the mercy of Jesus Christ at the cross is there. We can make confident that, yes, we're forgiven of those sins. The last day we'll rise again with him. And so our struggles in this earth against sin remind us that we are really are God's children. Though we do sin, we are forgiven. That we're struggling with sin, that's because God is there fighting with us. And the last day, we will rise as literal children of God. God's children, not just in name, but in fact. Good to know. God's with us. Amen. We continue with the prayers. Holy God, holy and most gracious Father, have mercy and hear us. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your saints shout for joy. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, and the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. We are bold to pray, for I conclude with the prayer that your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless you, defend you from all evil, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen.